Yeah, Jimmy Kalof, thank you for joining us today. You're the author of the new book, Afghanistan, and uh, we're very pleased that you're here to answer some questions. Um, my, my first question is, why is the Sahel growing in importance uh, in terms of security challenges today? Well, because the Sahel is a, a kind of new frontier for the jihadist groups in the, in the world. And the Sahel has a number of fragility, uh, you know, proper fragility, particularly uh, very high demographic uh, growth, very fragile agriculture, a lack of job for the uh, young people, uh, you know, very poor uh, level of education, uh, threats coming from, the, from global warming regarding uh, agriculture. So you have a kind of cocktail, the elements which is extremely dangerous when uh, uh, jihadist groups uh, come in and try to manipulate the different tensions, particularly because it's a multi-ethnic and multi-religious area. So there are necessarily uh, many, many uh, tensions, problems, which increase with the demography and uh, with the extremist Islam in, uh, in the system. It's becoming uh, quite worrisome particularly as uh, the migration problem in Europe has become a major political issue. So uh, can you expand a little bit upon, uh, on, on that? You mentioned the, dem the demographic challenges, uh, the governance challenges, the, uh, the migration challenges. What steps have been taken uh, to date to address these challenges and are they sufficient? Well, let's start with demography. You know, it's, it's striking that uh, during the 19th century, uh, one felt that this was a, a big period of uh, huge migration, usual migration. You remember Europe uh, sent uh, people throughout the uh, United States, uh, but also through Latin America, through Australia, etc. And we were feeling that uh, there was an excess of population in Europe, so that they had to go to a new continent, to new continents. Uh, but at that time, the uh, growth, the rate of uh, population uh, growth in, uh, in Europe was one sixth of what it is now in the Sahel. So it gives you an idea of the challenge. Basically, in most Sahel countries, uh, population doubles every 20 years, which means that the country such as Niger, which was uh, 3 million in uh, at independence now with a little more than 20 million. It will be 42, 43 in 20 years, and between 60 and 90 in, uh, in 2050. Uh, and of course, uh, Niger is a big country, it's twice, uh, twice and a half uh, France, but only 8% can be cultivated, 8% of the rye can be cultivated. This means that, uh, you know, in terms of sustainability, of the system, particularly because the demographic transition has not taken place at all in, uh, in Niger, we are confronted to a demographic challenge. And in fact, this demographic challenge is pushing this country into a, a kind of poverty trap, contrary to what many believe. Many believe that, uh, you know, people are the wealth of the nation. But uh, when you reach this type of uh, growth rate in terms of uh, demography, you know it's a really serious handicap. And the problem, what has been done? Well, nothing. Uh, we have brought uh, better health conditions. Not, you know, this is not perfect, far from perfect, but at least the uh, death rate of children under five has, uh, has been significantly uh, diminished. But at the same time, in time of bringing uh, contraceptive advice, etc., for family planning, nothing has been done. Uh, nothing has been done because uh, there are strong prejudices among the local population on those issues. So it's a sensitive and very touchy subject. But also because the donors don't want to get involved in this area. Uh, and one of the reasons is also that the uh, far right in the US, is adamantly opposed for this. And, uh, you know, George W. Bush uh, told that he would cut funds to any institutions uh, involved into uh, family planning in the world. 
And that was a reason to that. And, uh, okay, <laughs> we don't touch this issue. So uh, we have a big problem, which has major consequences in terms of uh, the future of these countries, in terms of uh, migration problems, in terms of uh, poverty, in terms of quality of uh, life, quality of education for these people. And uh, to tell you frankly, we are not doing much. What should we do? Well, we should associate, in, in terms of demography, we should associate all the uh, support we provide in terms of uh, health in the rural area. And it's, we don't provide much. I think we, we should provide much more. But we should associate to this uh, advice and uh, solutions to uh, uh, allow women to have better control about their uh, pregnancies, about uh, the wanted birth, etc. Now the problem of uh, the cultural problem is very serious, of course. And I think the uh, governments need to take the lead in this area and to explain that it's impossible for families of 12 children to continue uh, like that because it's exponential. And the, uh, you know, the capacity of the country to support such a population increase is just not there. But by doing so, uh, they are taking political risk because they run against the uh, common uh, opinion. They run against the advice of most of the uh, religious authorities. They run against the advice of uh, some uh, you know, foreign NGOs. And uh, they run against, uh, you know, the uh, policy of the jihadists. So they are taking not only a political risk, but a physical risk, a personal risk. And f to get results in 20 years' time, that is beyond their political life. So it, it explains that it's very difficult to handle. You mentioned at the beginning the challenges of weak states and poor governance. What steps could we take to address those challenges uh, in the Sahel? You know, the problem is that uh, if you go back a little bit in the past, uh, the instructions that have been given to donors for, uh, let's say, 30 years was to focus their efforts on uh, countries which are uh, well managed. And that made sense because, uh, you know, if you want to maximize the impact of global aid in the world, it is by funding uh, countries which have a capacity to take, make good use of these uh, resources that uh, you maximize at world level the, the benefits that can be expected from aid. But the problem to do today is that the countries which were well managed have all graduated as middle-income countries, basically. And what remains are mostly fragile countries, poorly uh, managed countries, uh, where the donors have, in fact, uh, little experience, because it's, it's so easy to uh, provide uh, resources, uh, funding, to a country which uh, knows where it wants to go, who knows, who has sound institution, who who knows what, what they want to do, because they have a good leadership, etc. Uh, but if you are dealing with uh, very fragile countries, where the government is totally disorganized, totally unstructured, where the donors play a major role, an excessive role sometimes, and are jockeying for positions and uh, you know competing instead of uh, collaborating, it's it's a real challenge. I think it's today's challenge for the donors is to try to address the problem in this region, and the Sahel is part of uh, this region. It's not the only area. The RC is a major challenge in itself. Afghanistan is a major challenge. The Horn of Africa is a major challenge. But the Sahel is uh, very serious because these countries, given all the constraints constraint they are confronted to, they are heading to very difficult, very, very difficult situation. And eventually, if uh, things turn uh, badly, to major humanitarian disasters. So it's better to try to prevent a humanitarian disaster than to try to, you know, bring bad edge at, uh, at the last minute. Thank you.